Hey y'all, Ramdino here. Well, it is that time of the month again where it's time for me to hit the trail. So here I am where I last ended up in Virginia. Uh, so here I am in the Parisburg Cemetery parking lot and I'm getting ready to, to Charlie Mike on up Boots North, heading up to the Kiefer Oak. So Honey Bun just dropped me off the shuttle. Uh, shuttle guy just dropped me off um he threw hike in 2019 so it's really neat to talk to him and uh anyway here at the kiosk getting ready to haul uh looks like i got i don't know maybe two and a half three hours worth of daylight so goal is to make it up to rice field shelter and not i don't camp in the shelter but um, not expecting a lot of folks uh on the trail this weekend so we'll see it's a long weekend, so I'm starting out on Thursday. Should be coming out on Sunday. Uh, maybe Saturday, but more than likely it'll be Sunday morning. All right, let me go ahead and get on the trail. So here I go. All right, this is the new river. You've seen this before if you've watched through hikers videos crossing over the new river. And that cut you're seeing on the mountain up there, according to Honey Bun, that is the Mountain Valley pipeline cut that comes through. And then last year they had to shut down the trail because you see those transmission towers up there, those got knocked out due to a storm or maybe a hurricane that came through. But there was like four or five of them that got knocked out so anyway i got about a i think it's a six miles climb up to rice field shelter is the destination the goal for the night may keep on going and see how much daylight we have uh but that's 1500 foot in i think about six miles so there you go New River. All right, Charlie Mike, on up for this climb. <laughs> How cool's that? A little whitetail action going on there. And usually, where there's one, there's when there's one doe, there's others. I don't see any any others, but. Anyway, pretty cool. I knew I heard something in the woods. All right, so I'll call this 20 minute check in since I've seen the whitetail, showed that to you. Um, once you get through the industrial area across the bridge down there, you get back in the woods and get away from all that road traffic. It starts to become a trail again instead of a industrial walk through. Train going on across the bridge, the traffic selling these plants all kind of stuff going on but anyway i'm in the woods now um, i think it comes out into a residential area because i think it goes right by angel's rest hostel uh, that's up ahead i think um so anyhow we are uh, continuing on down it is muggy and buggy i've been bit several times and it's um so it's a uh, it's a uh, muggy gonna be a muggy trip looks like hopefully once i get up on top of the hills the mountains up there some of this mugginess will be gone from it so i'm just a couple miles in and for some reason I'm, I'm shaky don't know what's causing that uh i have passed a stress test of flying colors in the past six months and a pulmonary test trying to figure out and why I was out of breath going up hills. So I've had I have had COVID since then, and I don't know if this is a sim symptom or sign of what's called long haul COVID. I've just been noticing lately when I climb a ladder, you know, a long ladder, or climb up a scaffolding or something like that, I get a little swimmy headed and out of breath, and that's very unusual. For me so i don't know if that's something this long haul covid there's so much junk with covid 
that nobody knows about and it probably as much to do with the vaccinations we got as it is the freaking disease but i'm not gonna i don't believe i'm gonna be getting any more vaccinations i'm just not gonna do it anymore so but that's just me that not may not be the right thing for you but i do hope to get straighten out whatever the dizziness is and i'm gonna start looking some of that stuff up all right we are continue going down this hill because <laughs> got to go back up it eventually that's why i hate losing altitude but i'll try not to get an attitude because of it all right continuing the mission all right so i think it's been a while since these trail maintainers have been out on this section uh not a lot of hikers through here just uh, you know, subos are up north no bows up north flip floppers are not a lot of them and not anywhere in between so it's mainly section and day hikers and this um looks like it's been here a while it's while it's one of those that's uh a pain in the butt to get over you had to walk uphill and then kind of straddle these multi limbs to get out of there and there have been other blowdowns that's not the first one i've seen that's probably the biggest one i've seen but then also through areas where there's a lot of grass possibility of it growing up on the sides it is so it's tick tick fest um so it's been a while so any maintainers that maintain this section um just kind of letting you know the conditions appreciate what you do but uh could need a little little attention um so back there was talking about long haul covid and maybe that's why i got the shakes or it could be that i came out too quick after getting over rocky mountain spotted fever which i had bad a couple weeks ago took me out of work for a week um but or a combination of the two who knows so i felt like i had enough food in me that wasn't it did go ahead and grab me a bar and load up on some sugar calories for this big climb up to rice field i'm about four miles out judging by the sun i don't know that i will i thought i had three hours when i left the cemetery i think that's inaccurate i guess I didn't account for it sun setting earlier this time of year so this is the last weekend in august so might be night hiking it there because it's really an uphill grind the whole way and i don't see any stealth sights and i'd really rather make it there and have this much of the trail behind me for the day for the trip so we'll see hadn't done a lot of night hiking so that would be interesting but i got this climb so let me go that's Parisburg down there uh obviously sun's down this has turned into a night hike uh camera really gives it more light than what I can see but in any case I'm about half a mile from the shelter so it'll be good and dark when I get there there was a car down at the trailhead so there may be somebody in it it's so buggy that uh I really need to put up my tent anyway, but to be perfectly honest with you, I'm beat after these climbs and I like just to collapse on the floor of the shelter, but I have to rest up a little bit. I'll be able to put a tent up and stay out of the bugs and collapse in there. Anyhow, I'll try to chime in one more time before I pass out for the night. Otherwise, I'll see you in La Manana. Well, it made it to Rice Field. 
boy what a view wish i could have been here for the whole show but lots of little lights blinking down there but how to be getting close i oh, know i'm getting close i just want to miss it but anyway what a gorgeous gorgeous view this is right yeah this is why we do it if you can fit this spot this this camping spot into your hike i highly recommend it there's just a lot of good views here at night and in the morning the sun comes up you got a great sunrise it's uh, right outside your tent it's kind of reminiscent of me for me of the roan mountain highlands so just really really glad i could fit this in you know if you're through hiking or um you, you may not be able to do it unless you started late coming out of parisburg that's where it, people usually take a zero but awesome spot to uh to camp all right so this is day two this is what i woke up to i'll throw up some sunrise and stuff here too but this was my campsite for the night this is rice field shelter back there in the back uh, on gut hooks or far out the privy it shows the privy being open but it's it's not they've got walls built around it now so, but anyhow this is a, probably one of my favorite campsites to wake up to well I'll take that back it's probably my second favorite I like the uh one up at Chestnut Knob there, trail north of the Roan Highlands. But anyway, that would be my number one, just looking down into Burke's Garden. But it's pretty neat. And you can see the trail. That's where we'll be going this morning. All right. We'll see y'all down the trail. All right, 20-minute check-in. So I uh, uh, thought today was going to be a reasonable... Um, you know, ridge walk, a little couple micro ups and downs and everything, but not a lot of big ups or downs for the first part of the day. Problem is, I'm doing a ridge walk. Uh, the trail has not been maintained through here, so I'm having to go around a lot of brush downs and fall downs, and the the trail is pretty much canopied over in numerous spots. And uh, can you can you barely see a trail there? So this is what happens. Uh, of course, everything's wet right now, so I'm getting sopping wet. Feet, legs, everything. But also, uh, and you look back there, there's trail south of me. Not much better, but there's a lot of these rocks and stuff in here. So you can't see, and they're loose. So you can't see where they're at. So you gotta take your time because everything's canopied over. Uh, they're covered in moss and such, and so it's uh, I'm not gonna make good time through here, I guess, is what it, what it boils down to, unless all this stuff clears up. Uh, numerous blowdowns through here. Um, when I say a branch down, I mean a branch is right in the middle of the trail. Uh, just past a blowdown that was right in the middle of the trail. I mean, it fell like the, along the path of the trail for. 40 50 feet so anyhow that may have killed my time for the day we'll see but in any case um hey any day on the trail is better than no matter what the trail looks like better than a day at work all right all right hey i came across a clear section awesome all right we will check in with you later and oh by the way I am the first one down the trail this morning because I'm walking through cobwebs and clearing it out. Hey, I've got a sign that tells me where the Appalachian Trail is. Good. Some places I wasn't sure. All right. Here's a neat little view, and I'm coming across this section here where they had to replace a lot of these towers that went down due to the um to that hurricane that came through here they'd be around to see if everything's grown back up or 
what it looks like through here. So far, I can't tell anybody's been through here. All right, we'll get back to you later. Let me fight my way through the jungle. Well, to be honest with you, can't even tell they were here other than this nice trim path here, but I got a feeling they would keep that up anyway to come and service these whenever they need to, which is probably not often. I think they service most of them with helicopters, but uh, just look at the size of the cut here through here. So it uh, looks like 300 feet, 100 yards. Um, and, you know, we talk about the, you see all those cuts over there for them. You talk about the Mountain Valley pipeline coming through and and there's a lot of, a lot of cane raised about that. And I wasn't necessarily against it so much as what the way they went about doing it. And of course, the way the ATC went about uh, being against it and trying to prevent it and and then they get i don't know what was it 18 million or something like that and uh then they all of a sudden shut up it's against that uh, but fortunately this stuff's necessary and i think the big brouhaha was why was such a large cut necessary anyway I don't know if I will see that or not because it was supposed to bore under the AT a couple hundred feet. Um, so I should go across it, but I doubt I'm going to know it. If I do, I'll, let, I'll show it to you. But I doubt I'm going to know it just because it's they were uh, supposed to bore to where it didn't come directly. You know, in other words, the AT is not going to have a cut on it where. It, you walk through the cut they're going to just bore through the mountain i don't know if they did that specifically for the at i kind of doubt it but maybe so maybe that was part of their pr campaign anyway we'll see if we get there i've always been interested to know if you could hear it when you got near it because it's only like couple hundred feet on each side of the trail is where the bore started so it's not like they started a mile away and bore under the trail the bore was only i think less than a thousand feet through the mountain which had a buddy of mine works for c dot lou keen and he was an army buddy of mine he works for the colorado department of transportation and he is an engineer and one of his specialties is tunnel bores I think he's done up to like a 14 foot bore or something like that before but anyhow the bore they would have for that size of that pipe i talked to him about it and you know he was talking like it'd run a couple like three grand or something a foot but so you think about how much that is if they had a thousand foot bore i'm not, I'm not gonna do the math you can do the math leave it leave the answer down in the comments but anyhow, in the grand scheme of the, that's a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of the pipeline, it's not. So, and then I have not heard of good old Uncle Joe shutting that pipeline down. I know he shut down a couple others. I'm surprised that one didn't get shut down either. So, enough of, enough of Uncle Joe though let's let's stick with the trail all right this is what it looks like and we will be checking in with you down trail i was told when i got up on top here i've been in an apple orchard and i'm in an apple orchard the apples are way up on top of that tree right there kind of hard to get to them and the one that i did get to there's an example of it, not too big, and they're still very, very green. So, not too, not too tasty. Boy, I just took a bite and it's already turning brown. That's weird. I don't know what all's growing in it. <laughs> 